Hello and welcome to another video. This one is going to be on how to use stable diffusion for design ideation. And the best part about this workflow is that it can be applied to multiple industries like architecture, entertainment design, and obviously automotive design. When you're working with artificial intelligence, a lot of times there's no like control over the image. But with this method, we could control the output. So instead of randomness, we get randomness where we want. So if we want to change the whole theme, but still keep a certain style, we could keep that. But then even once you find a theme that you like, and then you just want to make small iterations, we could do that as well. And even if you couldn't find a theme that you liked, you could always get the face of one car and maybe the body side of another. And then you can mash them together with simple photo editing skills. And then you could run it through stable diffusion and it will take care of blending them together. And even if, let's say, you wanted to add some custom, you know, photoshopping skills, even if they're a bit crude like mine, you could still make it so that it guides the image and the theme. And then that way, you could really take control of stable diffusion and it could really help your design process and even the end result. One of the reasons why I really love using stable diffusion is because it's completely open source, which means that it's completely free. Once you have it installed in your computer, all you need is four gigabytes of VRAM on your graphics card, and you could be using Stable Diffusion without internet anywhere you want in the world. And those images that you create, you own those images. So if you put them in like a t-shirt or if you put them in a book, nobody can use those images without your legal consent, which is obviously extremely important in, in my industry. And especially the fact that, you know, everything is kept local. You don't have to send anything to any server like other services. And you don't have to pay no monthly subscription. And, uh, and it's also extremely easy to use. Even though it's easy to use, it's actually kind of hard to install. But luckily, AI Entrepreneur, the YouTube channel, has a very good video. Links are in the description on how to install Stable Diffusion step by step. And if you're the type of person that likes to read instead of watch a YouTube video, I have written a guide on my website that has all the steps and details of this video. I am also opening up a Discord channel where the whole purpose of it is so that we can share each other's prompts and key phrases and sort of help each other grow and find these different methods uh, using stable diffusion, more importantly centered around design ideation. Another really good resource I found was lexica.art, which is a stable diffusion search engine. And there you can see the different images that were used with the different key prompts. And that's one of the main places where I find the different ways to talk to the AI and get certain styles. So before I get into the process of it, I just want to give a shout out to Hussein al Atar, who was the original creator of this BMW X6 sketch. Right now, he's a creative director at, at DesignWorks. And um, he actually reached out to me on Instagram when I posted uh, the iterations that were used through his input, wondering if I used his sketch because it looked fairly similar. And a lot of people could have, you know, maybe been mad at that, but actually quite the opposite. He was extremely cool and very uh, open to AI and very interested. And he even encouraged that I basically show the input so that other people can get these sorts of results. So a big thank you to him. And it's also one of the best sort of examples of how this workflow works, right? So I use the input image and then I use that text prompt. And then by changing the settings around, I can have stable diffusion give me all sorts of different results. And here are more examples of input images and what results I got with stable diffusion and the text prompts. Uh, as you can see, it actually it's what, what I what I input it and what I receive is very different. It has a much it has it's really both AI and yourself working together. And a lot of times I find that uh, just even changing the angle or the color might make the whole situation work. And then other times, even though it might have worked with one input, it just doesn't want to work with the other. And so that's why I like using Blender because I could change the angles and I could change the different assets around. Another really big thing I noticed is if you have more things in the scene, the less likely that you're going to have other cars randomly show up. 
So the in, so that's what's really nice about this workflow is that the input image can be anything from a collage to a, a sketch of yours to a 3D rendering. And that mixed with the special combination of words you use for the for the key prompt really makes it so that you can make almost infinite sort of variations and different styles. So I think the real beauty of this isn't so much that like, you know, it's illustrating for you. It's that a lot of people are going to have access to this and they're going to find their own way to come up with their own unique uh, approach to mixing AI and design ideation. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys develop and please tag me in any of the things you post up because I find it extremely interesting what you guys come up with using techniques that I might have taught you. And if uh, someone asks you how you did it, if you say uh, I used raise technique, you know, maybe that'll be cool too. Uh, <laughs> since I, uh, I gave this to the world, no, I'm joking. I think, uh, I, I think that this was always gonna happen but I'm glad that at least I could show it to you guys a little bit sooner. So now let's kind of like run through an example of how I use uh, stable diffusion, right? So first I'm gonna go to image to image, and then I'm gonna open up an input image that I've, that I've used before uh, to generate some new you know, uh, designs, right? I'm gonna use this one. And, um, and then one of the other things I'm gonna do first is we're gonna make it a little wider. And then in the prompt, I'm just going to put electric luxury SUV, right? And so here I'm just kind of showing you guys how it's going to like come off like right off the bat, right? So, so as you can see, we kind of got, you know, it doesn't really pay much attention to, to the image, but that's because the denoise level is a bit, is a bit much, right? So if you see in this graph, you can see that the denoising scale, it, it really, it's really nice around the halfway point because at halfway, it's sort of, it's sort of half you and then half the, 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 um, half, a uh, half, a uh, stable diffusion, right? So now I'm going to, now I'm going to generate again. So see, now we're getting a little, now we're getting a little more control. Um, but if you notice, we're still, I mean, you know, these are fairly like boring, you know, sort of uh, iterations, right? Because we need more prompts. And also we want to change the settings around, right? For example, the CFG scale. If you look at this graph, you can see as the CFG scale is gets lowered, it looks more like realistic. And then as you go higher up, it looks a lot more um, like an illustration, right? So I'm going to move my CFG scale to like 25. So now it's looking more like a like a sketch, uh, but also my sampling is a little low. So I like to kind of leave my when I'm doing a lot of iterations, I'll keep it like around like maybe 80. But a lot of times I'll move it up to 120 once I'm like when, once I find a good sort of like combination of input image and uh, and um, and the, the key prompts. Right. So now I added all these nice little keywords and like, let's see, let's see what type of results we get. See, now we're getting better. But to really sort of make this shine, we need to uh, add artists into the prompt, right? So I have a bunch of the artists listed in, uh, in my website. And here, when you, can see, when you see this graph, you can see how the different artists interact with each other, right? So um, a, a, good, a good way to sort of get all this information without having to like have it written down anywhere is once you actually have it, have done it in, in your, maybe in your output, or if you find like sort of the images in my share, like in my website, you could always open it here and then, um, and then you go into your, you know, wherever you have those, those um, images uh, saved. And, and when you, when you open it, it's actually going to tell you exactly how, what, what prompt you used to make that image. So uh, I'm, I'm actually going to go send to image to image like that. And so now uh, the artists are here. And then what I use to create the other is, is, the, is there too. The settings, which I'm going to lower these a little bit, the settings are also the same and you, you even get the same seed that you use to generate the other image. But since it's a different input image, I'm just going to go random again. And then let's, uh, let's press generate and just see what happens. And so see, now we're getting a whole bunch of nice uh, different renderings of, uh, you know, that has, that have a nice sort of like feel to them, right? 
So let's say that you want to save these. You could always uh you could always go here to create style, and then that and then uh, remember to leave out the subject, and then that is gonna be then you could have it saved up here, right? So uh, I'm gonna copy this, uh and and just to kind of show you guys what if like let's say if I use the the uh, concept sketch one right, and um, press generate. This is a uh, this is one of the ones I use for the different like more sketchy um images. See that's kind of cool too, but I was really I really like the other one we were doing, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'm gonna put back the regular prompt we did, and I'm gonna I'm gonna click generate, so I could show you guys one of the one of the other things we could do with with a uh, um, stable diffusion right off the bat. And so now let's say that you have an image that or like a sort of like a design prompt that you like. Um, there's a there's a very quick way to like let's say like like you almost got it right. But there was just a couple of the settings, like you know, it just didn't look completely right. Um, you could always go into the extras, and and then you could actually add, you could lock that seed, like this, and then add a variation string of like one, or like one point, let's say point one two, right? And then if you click on generate again, see, it's still gonna have the same like general vibe. It's just gonna be a little different. Uh, another thing that I you could do, and I kind of noticed it, is that is that this like it's kind of far away, right? So you could actually, if you click on this button, you could do this, and then I'm gonna click Shift and make it smaller, and I'm gonna surround it like that, and then here I'm gonna click Crop and Resize, and uh, and then I don't want right now I don't want any of the variation variation stuff, and I also want a new seed just to kind of see see what other um, you know iterations we can get. So see that's looking better. Um, and so like, let's say that, that now you have, you, you, you have a nice, like sort of, you're getting a nice, a, a lot of really nice images. What we can do is we can sort of, uh, make it so that it just keeps, it keeps, uh, um, producing a bunch of these. So basically you don't have to be here and just be clicking on the button all day. So what, where, where you go is, uh, here in batch count, you could go all the way up to 16 and then batch size, you will go up to eight. So batch count, it just like right now, if we hit render, it's gonna give me 16 of these. And um, and then it's also gonna give me a nice little grid about them, right? Um, uh, and it's gonna make them all one at a time. And But if I make, if I do batch size two, every time it runs, it's gonna make two at the same time. So I'm gonna end up with 32. And it all depends on how much your card can like handle. My uh, 3090 can do all the way, but since I'm also recording and stuff, it probably wouldn't do such a good job at, uh, you know, being able to record my voice. So um, so uh, right now I'm just gonna quickly do like 16 of these so you could kind of see how how you end up, uh, how, how it ends up looking. So once it's done, you actually kind of see it like this, right? And if I click here, you can see the 16 that it produced, right? And if you go with the batch eight, you'll, you'll get 125 and so, um, or 128. So, uh, so um, that, which is a lot, but it's also, um, uh, it, that would take about, it usually takes about 40 minutes for my 3090. But let's say that you wanted a whole lot of different ideas, right? Like overnight and stuff to kind of, to have it basically just kind of keep going until the end of time. You, there's actually a script right here. And then you, uh, how I do it is you go to X, Y plot, right? This this script is how you kind of have how I've done all those scripts that you see in my in my video because you, you, you could basically change any of the strings or anything like that and you and then here you put the values right but since I only want to all I want is just different seeds you know because I just want different iterations so on X type I'm gonna put nothing and on uh, I'm sorry on Y type nothing on X type seed and then from values we just need any seed right so I could just click on any of these right. And then the seed is here, like that. I press Control Copy, uh, paste here, and I press uh, uh, that that number two. I'm, I must paste it again. And then here, if I put five, once I click Run, it's gonna give me five hundred iterations. And if I even go here and change this to like uh, you know eight, now it's gonna give me three thousand iterations. So, and each iteration is going to be exactly like this in the sense that it's going to have, it's going to have, um, you know, it's going to be sort of the same theme, but it's still very different. And I think that's extremely valuable in basically design, right? Because, 
because now you know you could wake up and then you have 800 different fronts to look at 800 different sides to look at you know and it's a very it's a very powerful way to speed up or you know to get a lot of like your creative energy you know and let's say that that um that this one like for example this one you really enjoy right uh, i must i'm gonna press send to image to image right so now um see so now it actually sent this one here so now uh if i close this i can actually if i lower this denoise you know earlier we did the variation seats but now i don't i, I i'm gonna take out the script because I, I was just showing you guys um now if i let me make sure it's also down to one so now i could use this i could use this as a starting image right and i'm lowering the denoise string and then now when I click generate, yeah, it's slightly different, not different enough though. Uh, actually, I'm gonna move it down to all the way, uh, I'm gonna move it to 0.55. So see now, now that even though it's the same like general theme, it's making subtle changes, but it's still keeping the theme that, that we originally uh, uh, you know chose. So this is how you can kind of use denoising as a way of basically you know going from very big changes to very minor changes. And then you use the power of all of these iterations to basically find the right front that you want and the right back that you want. And exactly how I'm using this image, you could put an image that you created in the sense of like, you know, when you mash them together with, you know, your Photoshopping skills, or even they could be kind of rough as well. And it's really, you know, destable to fusion. You could always move that noise around to basically clean it up. And that's kind of the general gist of how I use um, Stable Diffusion to do a bunch of different design ideations. And I think it's an extremely powerful way of, you know, basically coming up with all of these ideas. And, um, and then remember in my website, there's even more ways of how to kind of, how to do these different, um, you know, matrix plots and how to, you know, so you could sort of streamline your like, you know, discovery process. But um, but in general, I think this really covers, you know, how to use Stable Diffusion for design development. And if um, and you guys have any questions in the comments, let me know. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, and uh, it took me a really long time. I do. It, but I, I am uh, extremely busy, but <laughs> but uh, the, the but since um, but I felt like this was so important that I had to take the time uh, off and just and just kind of showcase how you guys can, you know, use this to, uh, to help your career and your design. And remember uh, what I always tell people, it's, uh, it's everyone can write, can write, um, a sentence, but no, but not everyone is a great author. You know, a lot of my design friends, they get a little scared of, um, of, of what the world has, you know, where, where their, their life is going, where they're, you know, all that. So to me, um, this is only the only reason it would be scared, scary is if you don't if you don't sort of progress with it and if you don't use it, because I do think that if it's not in your skill set, it's going to eventually be around you and you're, it's going to be very difficult for you to compete with um, with the different, um, you know, uh, designers and stuff who are just coming up with so many ideas because they're using AI to help them discover what the right design proposal is. So anyway, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you guys have a, a, a good day and um, I'll see you guys uh, soon, I hope. <laughs>